lesson 11 is on quantum numbers. Quantum, so we're going to discuss what quantum is and how to write these numbers out. So Louis de Broglie in 1924 came up with this idea that electrons move with wave-like properties. So instead of them traveling around a planet or around a nucleus in a straight line, they instead fluctuate up and down as they circulate around an object. He calls this a quantized wavelength, which means, if you look at these two diagrams, that they all have these very interesting fluctuations. He also states that there are no values for these wavelengths that are unknown numbers or numbers that are um, uh, forbidden because of the fact they have to be a certain number like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, not 1.5, 2.5 because of the fact that they will not have the correct wavelength. Also, when you look at this, he's saying that if you were to pluck a guitar string, you could figure out the vibration. And that vibration is quantum. So he's actually looking at the vibration of something as it goes. When he was saying before that you can have certain wavelengths that are very restricted to their numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, not 3.3, as you see in the bottom right-hand side, he's saying that these numbers are representing a very precise path the electron takes as it orbits around a body. So all of that helps Werner Heisenberg in 1927 to see that an electron ultimately changes its velocity and position. Um, so it is impossible to know both the velocity and a position of an electron at the same time. So the reason why it is impossible to know both the velocity and position of an electron is that the second a photon touches an electron and bounces back into your eye, a photon, a particle of light, will actually influence the behavior speed and position of an electron. So the second you see it, it's no longer in the same path that it was going. Or the second you see it, it's no longer in the same speed it was going. Because it bounced. Yes, because it bounced right away. Complicated. So again, going back into the idea of the quantum model, that instead of having an orbital, we now have what we call that electron cloud, which is a 90% probability, probable location about finding an electron. All right, so quantum numbers, they're like addresses of each electron on, in an atom. So the first number is going to be considered the principal quantum number, which we call n. And again, this is going to relate to the principal energy level, so 1 through 7. They are going to determine the size of the actual orbital needed. So n to the second power, the number of orbitals in the energy level. The second quantum number is called the angular momentum quantum number, which we call L. And L is going to be the block of the periodic table. So to find L, you take N, which you just saw in the last slide, and you subtract 1. This determines the shape of the orbital, and as you see, S, P, D, and F all have different orbital sizes. And here's some values. If you're in the S block, you have 0 as your L. If you're in the P block, you have 1 for L. D block, you have 2 for L. And in the F block, you are at L is equal to 3. The third number is the magnetic quantum number, or M with a little lowercase l. Sometimes that l doesn't show up, so just know that it's sometimes there, sometimes not. Um, but it's going to represent the orbital position. Um, think of a number line. Uh, 0 is going to be the center. Anything to the left of 0 is going to be negative. Anything to the right of 0 is going to be positive. So when we look at S, P, D, F and their orbital positions, we're going to see that S only has one orbital, so it can only have a center orbital of, F, of zero. Uh, P, though, has three orbitals, so the center is zero, to the left is negative one, to the right is positive one. D has five orbitals, again, the center is zero, to the left is negative one, negative two, to the right is positive one, positive two. And then finally, F has seven orbitals. So again, find the center. That is zero. Anything to the left is negative. Anything to the right is positive. And for our fourth and final quantum number, we talk about the electron spin, which is M with a little s. The spin just identifies the electron spin direction, which we're going to be using Hun's rule from a previous video. Now, you can either use a positive half or a negative half. Those are the two different values for this electron spin number. So, when you look at your orbital diagrams, it's the difference between an up and a down arrow. So, you're noticing all the arrows that are going to be 
facing upward is a positive half spin. Everything that's going downwards is a negative half spin. So the rules for writing down these quantum numbers determine the number of electrons in the element. You want to start with that orbital notation from the last videos. Uh, figure out how many electrons you have. So we have 10 in this case. Just We're going to pick one. The, the eighth one. And notice it's the down arrow here. Identify the quantum number. So what is the principal energy level of that electron? It's the second one. What is the block of the P? Um, what is the block of the periodic table it is in? It's in the p sublevel. And then what place in the orbital is it? Is it center? Is it left of center? Is it right of center? In this case, it is left of center, so we get the negative 1. And then finally, is it an up or a down arrow? So it's a down arrow, which is why we gave it a negative 1. That specific electron has a quantum number of 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1 half. It is very specific to only that one electron.